to our FIDM studio. Ryan Camden, Reggie Books, live here on Watch ND. And uh, press conference number one in the books. It's uh, Rice Week officially here in South Bend. And let's take a closer look at the Owls. You look at this, this Rice team, Reggie, coming off arguably their greatest season ever. Ten wins, Conference USA title, and they have a little history with Notre Dame, uh, the last time these two teams played, they played four times total, and uh, the last time they played, it was a 54 to 11 Irish victory back in 1988. Make of that what you will. Uh, they played a few times before that, including twice in the 40s. As we take a closer look here at the series history, the first game, 1915, Rice making the trip all the way up from Houston. The Irish won that one 55-2. to two. But a, a closer look, uh, Rice coached by David Bailiff, who is uh, in his eighth season, of course. Ironically, he replaced Todd Graham, who we'll see a little later in the season there in Houston. He received a five, uh, a new five-year deal last year, 10-4, and 7-1 and one in conference play. What do you make of the Owls? They great year last year, but graduated a lot of talent. And I think that's the key. And this is where uh, I have a real problem with those preseason rankings because each year it's a different team. And the Rice Owls graduated a lot of their talent. They had a very good quarterback last year. You know, the guy they have in there this year, Dreyfus uh, Jackson, good player, but he's, he's a bit of an unknown. Um, the one key factor they do have is a big receiver on the edge, Jordan Taylor. Uh, but overall, they've lost quite a bit from that uh, talented team last year. And you're looking at a completely different football team. They may run the same system, but you're going to see a lot of different players just like we are. I mean, we're a different team than we were yeah. last year. And I think, you know, we have some, you know, some of the deficiencies and as does Rice. So when you look at this Rice team, you know, you, you kind of see what – you're going to kind of see us a little bit with that zone, zone option. Uh, they're going to do a lot of the same things we do offensively. Defensively, they're similar as well, but they, they play a, lot, a different type of uh, coverage on the back end. A lot of questions surrounding Jackson, a, a guy who saw some time his freshman year but took a big step back last year. And, and looking at the 2013 stats for each team, this is a team that had some success late down the stretch. They were kind of a surprise winning the Conference USA title, and uh, they did a good job running the ball with Charles Ross, who had over 1,200 yards. You see that in the time of possession there. Uh, uh, 15 touchdowns for us, but he's gone. Mick Hargue's gone, and, and the question revolves around Jackson and Jordan Taylor, the wide receiver that you mentioned. 6'5", 55 career receptions, 900 yards, eight touchdowns last year. A guy that can really stretch the field for this Al offense, but when you you look at this Al team, your player to watch is a guy that a lot of people have tabbed high uh, to be have his name called maybe the first or second round of the NFL draft, Christian Covington, the Canadian junior defensive tackle. He's a monster. Well, and you look at this young man, 6'3", about 295, probably you know more like 300 pounds, but he's that prototypical uh, defensive tackle, you know, and the, the guy that can really uh, put pressure on the quarterback from the inside, That the guy that can kind of collapse that pocket and let your edge guys get upfield. This is a guy that we're going to have to really do a great job in that double team. And the one thing, as a defensive player, you know, he gets to – he runs to the football – and his, he has a high motor, he keeps after it, does a great job with his hands, shedding blocks. But the thing that's going to be critical for us of our offensive line is our interior uh, offensive line in the center and the two guards. We've got to prevent him from splitting the double team and keep him you know, contained, which is going to be difficult. But he does a great job with his hands. But I really think if we can contain him, it's going to put a lot of pressure on their um, on their defense to cover our receivers and also keep us uh, – you know, contain the running game, which I think that's where we're going to have a lot of success. Yeah, Covington, one tough son of a gun, broke his hand, played five games with a cast, recorded four and a half tackles for loss. He's going to be playing with some new defensive ends and some other new defensive linemen. How does that affect his ability to penetrate there? Well, it puts a lot more emphasis on him because now if you can block one-on-one -on -one with the, your tackles on their ends, you can put a little more emphasis with the guards in the center, double teaming uh, 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 Christian and getting him – contained and bottled up and, and creating some lanes. So it really puts an emphasis on him to do more, and we're going to see how good of a player he is because a lot of the focus now is solely on him. You don't have maybe as much talent around him to kind of help uh, offset you know what uh, offense does against that uh, Rice defense. He'll be there. Number one for the Owls. Definitely want to keep an eye on him on Saturday. And for the Irish, your player to watch, I don't think there's a lot of question about it. Uh, number five, the leader, Everett Golson. This is a young man that, uh, you know, we've heard a lot of the, the, the things that happened, but the one thing that jumps out to me is how he's grown 
during his hiatus. Um, you know, he comes back with a lot more. Uh, and Coach Kelly talked about in the press conference, he's a lot more vocal. He's taking ownership of the team. I had an opportunity to speak with him after the spring game, and you know he had he, he talked about you know hey getting back into the flow. But the most important thing for him is winning back his locker room. I mean to have the quarterback as that center, center focus. It's one thing to have receivers and uh, you know uh, defensive uh, offensive linemen running backs as your key uh, key players. But when your quarterback is the leader, it takes on a whole different dynamic for your team. He is that, that centerpiece for your offense, which, as we know, is going to have to score some points this year just together to give the defense some, some time to adjust. And this is where I think he's at his best, the ability to roll out and put pressure on the defense where defenses have to st- step up and, and, and really look to, to defend him, not just 10 on 11. You got 11 on 11, and when your quarterback can come in and make plays with his feet, he has a big arm, great, great deep ball thrower, but I think his biggest impact is going to be from a leadership position to get that confidence in his team because when they when you rally around your quarterback, it makes a huge difference with what you can do offensively. What I love about Everett, one snap really from a big play in so many ways, and they mentioned it in the press conference, Reggie, 600 days since Golson took that last snap against Alabama in the BCS championship game. How important is it for him to just go out there get into the flow of the game, get that first snap, maybe take that first hit and just get his yeah. confidence back. That is the key, that, that first hit to, to, to really acclimate himself to contact football because you, ha- you don't have as much contact in the offseason or, or, or during the spring uh, springtime or fall ball. But that first contact to give that confidence that, hey, I'm back. You know, it's, it's, it's something about that first contact that you take that, that dispels a lot of the, the indecision, a lot of the, you know, doubts in your own mind of can I really come back and play this game at a high level. When you take that first shot, get up and come back and go out for that next play, it, it really calms you down. It, it may sound funny, you know, that you know, a, a, a good pop can calm you down, but for a lot of players, that first initial contact gives you the, the – makeup of hey how this game is going to go and you know what level of confidence you you can you have to take a hit moving right along Reggie let's jump into your keys to the game for the offense how important is it start fast finish strong we haven't done that since since coach Kelly's been here in my mind we we you know last year we started fast against Temple quick couple of quick touchdowns and we kind of plateaued I want to see us really get after it and really go from start to finish, so from the first snap all the way to the fourth quarter, really get after it. That is going to be a key for this offense and for this team. The offense has got to be the driver for this team this year. And for the defense, with that new system, a new coordinator, need to play with that discipline, gap assignment. And, and you're going to have some, some blown assignments. But if you can be diligent in what you do and for those guys that are going to play those 12 to 15 snaps, come in and give us high percentages of, of uh, good, good, solid football where you're not making the mental error. So, you know, the guys that are playing the 12 to 15 snaps, we need at least not between 9 and 13 of those snaps to be good snaps and productive snaps. And we need this defense to, to really gel together, especially on the back end, because it's going to take a while for this defensive front to kind of get it going. But when they do, we're going to get after the quarterback. That's going to be a key factor. You're going to see a lot of high energy, that athleticism that Coach Kelly talked about, of coming off the edge, being aggressive. And in that, you're going to make some mistakes but you got to come back and play that next play. And when you get to the quarterback, that tends to, to lead to a lot of turnovers. I know you harp on that a lot. How important is the turnover battle in this game against Rice? It's key. I mean, you know, you, know, you see a lot of times where you know, teams can rack up a lot of yards, which I think will do. But if you're not taking care, of the, taking care of the football and putting it in end zone and you're giving it back, it's really going to put a lot of pressure on your defense, a defense that can't afford to have a lot of pressure put on them right now until they grow up. And defensively, hey, play free, play fast, and go out and take the football and learn how to become a, te- a defense that creates turnovers and creates that indecision in that quarterback's mind to say, hey, this team is aggressive and they're looking around where, where's the blitz coming from? Where's the pressure coming from? And they tend to make those mistakes. And when we make, get an opportunity to uh, get a turnover, wouldn't be bad to take it to the house. <laughs> <laughs> Kickoff set for 3.30. It's, it, I'm stoked. I can't wait. Uh, it, it, Saturdays are going to be special once again here in South Bend. I want to remind you that 
Tickets are still available in a limited capacity uh, for the season opener against Rice. You can go to und.com slash tickets, call the number you see on your screen, or stop by the Murnane Family Ticket Office. And one more thing before we sign off here at the FIDM studio. Watch and D is going to have a great of ton uh, of Notre Dame content all week. You'll see the Brian Kelly radio show, women's soccer against Texas Tech and USC. And after the football game, we'll have highlights, press conference, interviews with the player, my on-field interview, icons, so much great stuff this week coming up on Watch ND. So for Reggie Brooks, I'm Ryan Camden. We'll see you Saturday and go Irish.